Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another video. Today I want to go over five tips that will help you guys get ready for sideboarded best of one formats, which I'm actually really, really happy about that Bandai is trying out at the Dragon Ball Super Fest. Uh, I know a lot of people didn't really like the Unison Warrior format idea, and uh, I didn't really mind it as much. I think that if Bandai is going to support alternate formats you gotta kind of start doing it somewhere but i know most people wanted a more traditional main event and something like the unison warrior block to be more of a side event but i do think this is actually a really really good compromise on bandai's part because uh sideboard of best of one is an idea that a lot of players are really really excited about because it does seem to improve the quality of life of best of one because it eliminates a little bit of that uh, rng and variance because you don't have to necessarily deal with auto loss matchups or really negative matchups without at least having a chance to counter them as badly. So we'll talk about some ways that we'll be able to prepare for sideboard of best of one because it's probably new to a lot of you guys. I've never even heard of it in a game except for flesh and blood. So I'm not even sure if other people have played in this type of format before. Let me in the comments below if uh, you've played a game that's utilized this format. But anyways, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell, so never miss a video. And if you guys want to help support the channel, many ways to do so down in the description. But today, if you guys are looking for custom sleeves, playmats, even foil playmats, use my link in the description to yourplaymat.com. I love their custom art sleeves, guys. They sent me some crossword art sleeves, and the best thing about them is they don't peel. Most art sleeves you'll find at your local game store, especially like anime type sleeves, they will probably peel after a couple uses. But yourplaymat.com, you can get any image you want on there, and they won't peel. So again, 10% off with the link in the description. Let's get into this video. All right, so firstly, I pulled up the rules here that Bandai posted on their Facebook post that announced they're changing the um, Dragon Ball Super Card Game Fest format to the sideboard of best of one. So let's give a quick read of the rules just for you guys that don't exactly know how it's gonna work. So as an event outside of the regular championship season, we would like to use the Card Game Fest as an opportunity to try out and gather data with the rule changes below for all 256 players and upsized in-person events. We appreciate our players and community coming together to make a difference in our game's future. So yeah, again, kudos to Bandai. I do appreciate them, you know, making that change from the Unison Warrior format when a lot of people really just, you know, voiced their their dislike for the format. And we got this, which I think, again, is a really, really cool thing to explore. So best of one game rounds, 30 minutes plus five minute time limit. So basically just cutting in half the regular 60 minute plus 10 minute time limit uh, for overtime. 50 to 60 card main deck and up to 15 card side deck that's standard and then after players have revealed leaders players have one minute to complete any side deck substitutions prior to beginning the game now two interesting things here one is you do get to fully see the leader your opponent's playing and then make sideboard uh changes according to that which is obviously really important but two this doesn't actually specify when you determine who goes first or second you know usually via a dice roll but i did check in the actual rule manual for the game and that is technically procedurally supposed to be done after both players present their leader and shuffle up their decks so according to that you know kind of just putting the puzzle together in this type of format you would place your leader down you know randomize your deck and then you randomize who goes first and then you'd be able to sideboard one minute well i guess you wouldn't shuffle before that you shuffle after that but yeah present your leader randomize who goes first and then make any sideboarding decisions and that's gonna be important for a tip we have later on but anyways after the round players must return their deck to its original 50 to 60 card configuration and then top cut matches will either be best of one game following the above rules or best of three depending on venue availability this is really cool i do hope top cut ends up being best of three more often than not because again for like that higher caliber play you want to just eliminate as much variance as possible but this is already a great step in um you know reducing I guess like going to time and reducing overall times of tournaments in a you know a pretty fair fashion because again you are eliminating a lot of rng and a lot of variance by allowing people to have the opportunity to kind of you know step up their odds against their bad matchups so anyways let's go into the tips that i have for you guys for prepping for sideboard of best of one Firstly, meta gaming for sideboarded best of one will be different than regular best of one. You guys may have particular thoughts already about best of one, especially if you competed in a lot of the webcam best of ones that took place over the last course of the year. So it's going to be a lot different. Uh, sideboard best of one is going to be a lot different than actual best of one, no sideboard. The thing with actual best of one, no sideboard is that certain strategies were allowed to just be overly dominant because 
their their checks and balances were not commonly found in people's main decks so you have strategies like um gohan uh, reboot gohan you have things like cell surge you have things like blue ramp decks or even just blue decks playing android 17 turning the tide and each of these decks has you know different checks and balances in in their own respective ways but again you just wouldn't really see those often in best of one occasionally you see people maiming the jiren counterplay for 17 but more so that was only like black decks or some mid-range decks just maining like one random copy and then you'd have some people maining deborahs because they didn't want to lose a cell surge and then reboot go on like you typically want to side into more negates and stuff like that which you don't really have the opportunity to do in the regular best of one obviously so meta gaming for best of one with cyborg is going to be a lot different because these types of strategies are going to actually have their answers prevalent within the format within people's sideboards so um expect this to be a little bit more similar i would say the best of three then best of one in terms of what decks you should expect to face because there really was a huge shift going from best of one webcam to the few irl best three events that we had um you know during last year because of the decks you expected to see you expected to see a lot of cell surge and webcam a lot of reboot gohan when it was legal but in best of three these decks weren't really all that popular because they were much easier to counter so the deck you guys are going to want to pick is going to be something probably more geared towards best of three or something you'd normally pick for a best of three and not one of these like kind of cheesy strategies for a sideboard of best of one now keep in mind if you have a cheesy strategy in mind that people aren't going to be playing answers to whether it was best of one or best of three maybe you want to take it to the event and maybe you want to kind of you know sneak out a top cut or even sneak out a win that's that's a little bit of a different thing that i'm talking about here i'm just talking about these like more meta cheesy strategies um you know reboot gohan cell surge are pretty much out of here but there's the best examples of more recent formats and then android 17 is uh, still a very possible one to expect going into the cyborg best of one or even a regular best of one so definitely keep that in mind all right the next tips here kind of go together so the first half of this is your deck is the best 50 out of 65. this format is going to be so unique so much unlike best of three in the sense that the first round of the match or i guess the only round of the match you get to tailor your deck for the matchup that you're playing if you're playing best of three and maybe you come across a rather unfavorable matchup you you know might not get lucky in that first game and then you have to rely on sideboarding effectively and then winning games two and three to try and you know reverse sweep the matchup this scenario though with the sideboard at best of one you have to make sure and it can very much work to your advantage if you're able to do this that your deck is tailored to that matchup that you're playing and yes you only get one game in the match and you could still have a bit of bad luck but that's not super likely in dragon ball super this is easily one of the most consistent card games out there on the market we draw so many cards we play we play full four ofs of most things scrs i guess add a fair amount of variance and cards are limited to one shout out to the color yellow but yeah it is up to you to make sure your deck is the best 50 out of 65 and that's going to make the best of one experience so much better for a lot of players and the players that are going to be able to sideboard effectively uh, are going to get so much mileage out of this now i'll be totally honest sideboarding is a super super hard skill to master i definitely still struggle with it what i've been really trying to work on as a player for myself is making sure that every event i go to my sideboard's actually very very effective how often do you guys listen to deck profiles and whatnot and people say oh you know i sideboarded this card for this scenario but never really came up now it's quite possible they just never faced the matchup where that card was relevant but it's also possible that that card just wasn't uh, fully tested or wasn't fully theorized and it wasn't the most effective card they could have sideboarded so that's gonna be a big skill you guys are going to, want to figure out for this sideboard best of one and it can really help you you know make top cut or even win an event the second half of this is you don't have to tech as much now i'm also super super guilty of this i really like playing cards on my main board that are going to help me get out of sticky situations especially if those types of decks or strategies are very very prevalent in the meta but now you just really don't have to do this because all those cards you would have teched in your main board are going to possibly be in your sideboard if you want them to be and the reason you would have teched those cards in general is because again for a typical best of three or even a best of one you have to work with what's in your main deck for that first game in this best of three format you don't have to do that you could literally build your deck with just the engine that's that allows it to run and then your your sideboard can just be those cards that are going to help you in different scenarios and kind of like a third side to this is you don't really have to play much more than 50 cards in your main board and that can actually help you a lot in terms of your deck's consistency what we've been seeing lately in the dragon ball super card game especially in this past like nationals and world season a lot of decks going towards like 55 plus cards now i do think there is 
big big justification for that mostly because decks like icarus that draw a crazy amount decking out is an actual fear you might have and then decks like Gogeta Zeno, you know milling five cards per turn you can definitely get away with playing a, a bigger deck size because you're going through so much for deck so quickly but in other scenarios with other decks that don't draw as much or don't mill as much it can be very very advantageous for you to stay at 50 cards or as close to it as possible and the fact that you have access to a 15 card side deck going into the one game of the match that's going to allow you to keep your main deck more concise and just make changes um you know based on that and keep your deck more consistent the thing that the thing that people always talk about in card games is consistency versus power how frequently can your deck do a thing versus how powerful is the thing your deck can do and nine times out of ten the consistent deck that can do a moderately powerful thing is going to win out over the course of a long tournament compared to the deck that can do a powerful thing but only like you know four out of ten games let's just say so yeah that is something really important to consider and this type of format will definitely allow you to keep your deck more consistent which is a really good thing you have going for you so here takeaways learn how to side deck appropriately and really really put to the test what you're going to want to side deck and keep your deck as streamlined as possible and allow your sideboard to do the teching for you next up take all builds into account this is really really important if you're playing in the sideboard best of one your opponent puts down soul striker what are you assuming what do you think they're playing and what are you siding in and out according to that soul striker is one of those tricky ones to play in this format or play against rather because you, you could be playing against the mono blue variant that relies on 17 turning the tide where you want to side in your jirens or you could be playing against a i don't know blue red or blue yellow variant that are that relies more on arrival so you might want to side in koitsukai to counter that but you just don't know that going in blind so this is actually probably going to be a really solid strategy in cyborg best of one i mean in general soul striker should be really really good going into set 16 no matter what but especially in cyborg best of one because a deck like this can really trick the opponent so maybe you guys are going to want to consider other decks like this that have multiple viable variants that are just going to basically confuse your opponent and not give them a direct clear way to sideboard so you are going to want to take all builds into account and now for soul striker for example um we've seen that the more popular builds lately have been blue yellow and blue red not so much mono blue so if i'm going to an event and i sit across from soul striker i'm going to assume blue red or blue yellow and a lot of those scenarios the cyborg cards will be pretty similar in terms of what i want to bring in again koitsukai could be a pretty solid option there and i'm probably not going to assume mono blue i could get screwed over in that fact they could be playing mono blue i could lose 17 turning the tide but i at least hedged my bets and went with uh you know the best educated guess i could have possibly went with and the final tip here guys tailor your deck to going first or second again bandai didn't specify who is going to or when you're going to randomize who goes first or second but according to the rule book and the way they list out the rules for sideboard of best of one it should be pretty much in between that window of placing your leader down and actually performing your side decking so going first or second is actually another really big skill to sideboarding that again is very hard to master but as an example a lot of times when i go first and again this really depends on matchup but if i'm playing like mid-range versus mid-range for example and i'm going first i'll actually side out a, a main deck negate or two because i know i have the energy advantage i know that i can put on a bit more pressure because of that energy advantage so i don't really need to be playing as defensively as my opponent probably has to because they're going to be playing a turn and an energy behind so that's just kind of an example of that it's very very good to know how to tailor your deck to going first or second but anyways guys that is gonna wrap up the five tips for you i'm sure there are more things we can cover for sideboard best of one if you guys want more tips for this type of format or anything else let me know in the comments below thank you guys for watching and i will see you guys in the next video